Our next speaker is Dr. Neil Foster, and he's been the director of South Dakota Crop Improvement Association uh, since 2005. So a lot of experience. Um, and I think I forgot to mention in the beginning that we will be displaying um, QR code for, the, for, the, for those folks who need uh, CCA credits um, at the end of the presentation or end of the hour, close to about 11 o'clock. Uh, so if you need any credit, please, um, you know, stay along with us and then, um, and then you will see a code after Neil's presentation. Uh, go ahead, Neil. Good morning, everybody. Um, my apologies if I get to sound a little rough. I'm just getting over a cold and I've got a slideshow put together, but I need to figure out how to share it with everybody. David, can you chime there, in and tell should, me what to do? There should be a share screen with the upward arrow okay. on, the, on the bottom, which is green in color, or at least that's what I see from my, uh, in my screen. If you click on that, it will. There we go. Okay. Does it need to be full screen? Yes. And then for the full screen, um, yeah, I think there your we go. mouse is right in the place. Okay. Morning, everybody. Um, I'm Neil Foster, and I'm the executive director of the South Dakota Crop Improvement Association. A little bit of background on me. Um, I've got over 30 years in seed testing and seed certification from South Dakota, Kansas, Montana, Oklahoma, and then back to South Dakota. The Plant Variety Protection Act was designed to help promote development of new varieties and allowing the owner to determine who can sell the seed of a particular variety. Uh, the law prohibits any sale of PVP seed, including farmer save seed, without the permission of the owner. This all started in about 1930 when uh, the Plant a Patent Act was acted on plants. Um, this act was mainly for nursery products like uh, fruit trees, ornamentals, roses, and cuttings because the developers would do all this work and they needed some way to protect it. In the 1960s, there was a group in Europe that started a, it's called UPOV, um, and I forget what that actually stands for, but it deals with plant variety protection in the European countries. Um, this is still in effect today, and when it was first designed, the U.S. did not sign on to it right away, but since then we have. In 1970, the Plant Variety Protection Act came into effect, and within this act, there was an exemption for farmer save seed, and there was a bit of a flaw in this exemption in that farmer could save seed to replant his own holdings, and if he had excess left over, he could sell that as seed. Well, this got to be extremely abused. Um, currently, that's been updated to remove the farmer exemption. Um, a farmer can save seed for his own use to plant in his old holdi holdings, but he can't sell it. This was all done to help encourage variety development. Um, our varieties will usually last about 10 to 15 years before the disease starts to break down. And we need a constant pipeline of new varieties coming in to take the place of the old ones as they wear out. The PVP helps ensure that by ensuring that once the seed goes out the door is certified, it can be used by the farmer, but it also helps ensure that the farmer is getting exactly what he's paying for. Um, the PVP provides patent-like rights to developers. Protected varieties can only be sold as seed stock by variety name or with the owner's permission. Um, the Title V states that a variety has to be sold by variety name. Without Title V, it can be sold, but only with the owner's permission. The type of protection for the variety needs to be clearly stated on the label. Um, and this protection allows for a limited amount to be saved for replanting. Title V of the Federal Seed Act specifies that PVP protected varieties can only sold, be sold by variety name as a class of certified seed. The PVP law also states that the seller must give notice 
that the seed lot is a PVP variety. Enforcement of the PVP law is left up to the owner of the variety, and this is usually accomplished, accomplished through civil court action. Uh, these are some of the statements that you can see on the labels. They'll say things like unauthorized propagation prohibited, U.S. plant protection applied for. This is on the very new releases. Uh, the breeder has a year from the date of the first sale as foundation seed to have plant protection variety applied for and approved. Um, so when you see that first day, but it means it's a brand new variety, it's just being released for sale, and it's probably only to a very, very limited number of growers as foundation seed. Um, other things you may see on the tag are unauthorized propagation prohibited, U.S. protected variety applied for, um, specifying that this is to be sold only as a class of certified seed. This is the Title V I mentioned earlier. Other things that you may see are unauthorized propagation prohibited. Oops. Um, there we go. Uh, unauthorized propagation prohibited U.S. protected variety or unauthorized propagation prohibited to be sold only as a class of certified seed. Um, prior to 1994, that's when the farmer saved seed ex exemption was in place. You'll see statements like this, unauthorized propagation prohibited U.S. protected variety PVP A 1994. This means that that protection was issued after 1994, so that farmer exemption no longer no longer applies to that variety. If anybody has any questions as I go along, feel free to interrupt. Um, this is a chart that kind of helps explain the difference between the PVP, or just a regular PVP, a PVP with Title V, and a patented variety. Um, the patents are like Roundup Ready, all your herbicide resistances and some of your insect resistances like the BT gene and corn are patented. Um, so if you want to save seed for planting, you can save it with a PVP only variety. You can save it with a PVP Title V, but you cannot save it to replant as a patented variety. Um, can you sell this seed? If it's a PVP variety and it's not certified, no. If it's PVP with Title V and non-certified, no again. And if it's patented, no, you cannot sell it as seed. Um, you are allowed to condition the seed for planting purposes of PVP varieties, but you are not allowed to do this of patented varieties. Uh, how can you tell if a variety has plant variety protection? Um, look at the label, look at the documents that you receive when you purchase a seed originally. Um, if you don't get these documents, it's probably not going to be legal seed when you purchase it. Uh, it will state clearly on the certification label the type of variety protection that that variety has, or it will state that of the bulk, bulk sale certificates. Also, in our seed directory, uh, there is a table that lists the type of protection all the current varieties have. There's also an internet site that you can look up to determine what type of protection a variety has. And this is an AMS USDA government site. And if you log on to it, this is what you will see. Um, kind of down in the middle of the screen, you'll see public access databases. If you click on that, it takes you to this, then you can look at the top one, the scan certificates, and it brings up all the different crops that have plant variety protection. So we will go to the wheat, and we're looking to see what kind of protection the variety brick has. Uh, it takes you to this page, and this shows you the plant variety protection number, the 2009-00427. And if we click on that, it brings up brick. It tells you that it was released by South Dakota Experiment Station. It was filed in 2009 at the time I printed this slide. The application was still pending. 
and it states that it is certified seed only to be sold by variety name as a, as a class of certified seed. If we look at a different variety or a different crop, it will, if we go to wheat again, these will show you all the different dates that encompass when a variety was released. This gets a little complicated. It takes some digging around sometimes to find what you need. If we click on one of those dates, the 2007, it shows us everything that was released that year that has either been applied for or the certificate has been issued for PVP. If we clicked on Traverse, um, we can see also at the bottom line that it is certified seed only to be sold by a variety name as a class of certified seed. Uh, if you look at Big Red, Big Red has plant variety protection, but it does not have to be sold as a class of certified seed. But in order to sell it as seed, you do need the owner's protection. So in this case, you would have to contact West Red and say, is it all right if I sell this seed? The South Dakota Crop Improvement are members of a group called Farmers Yield Initiative. And this is a group that is a coalition of public and private partners with the common goal of protecting the public and the grain industry by supporting plant variety improvement through research, education, certification, and PV enforcement. And this is all for the producer's benefit. Uh, if we didn't have PVP, we would not have the number of new varieties coming out every year. It takes a breeder roughly 10 to 15 years to develop a new variety after they go through all the thousands of crosses that they initially start with, and then the years of screening and testing in order to make sure that that variety is what is good for the industry. With things like wheat, they'll look at the milling properties, the baking properties, and if it comes out and makes a, a terrible loaf of bread, it won't be released. And this is just some of the testing that it goes through. It takes about 10 to 15 years to develop a variety, but also there is a huge investment by the breeder and the university and the state and our growers throughout the state in dollars to develop those varieties. It takes probably well over a million dollars to initially develop a variety from the initial cross till it's released as seed. Um, these are all the, some of the different members of the Farmers Yield Initiative, AgriPro, Ag Seco, uh, Watley Seed, a company down in Texas, uh, the Kansas Seed Dealers, Kansas Crop Improvement, South Dakota Crop Improvement. And you can see it's a wide range of private industry, public universities, and seed certification agencies that are members of this. What this group does is it helps enforce the plant variety protection infringements. Um, if you see any illegal sales or you're suspicious of it, this is the address or the number that you can call to report those tips. Um, in the last 10 to 15 years, the university has finally realized what illegal sales cost our growers in the state and our programs, and they've decided to start to enforce these. Uh, we've had more than five cases over the years, and we do this through Farmers Yield Initiative. It's a lawyer that does all the background. Uh, he digs up all the background information, does all the investigation, and then he'll bring this case forward if he warrants it, if, it, if the case warrants it. Um, these cases rarely go to trial because he has everything lined up that there's basically no wiggle room for the person that has done the infringement. <clears throat> you always want to try to have legal seed because it always comes back to bite you in the end. Um, this is just a slide that I had that shows, you know, the eagle probably had the deer carcass and the coyote tried to come in and and basically infringe upon the eagle's claim and the eagle comes back to bite the coyote. I kind of went through this quick, but I hope there's questions that I can answer for everybody.
Um, yeah, feel free to use the chat or the Q&A uh, function on the bottom of your screen if you have any questions, comments, or even thoughts that you have seen or, or heard, you know, um, so, that you, so that we can all learn from this because this is, um, this is very important to, to what, we do, what we all do. Yeah, meantime, Neil, if you want to stop sharing your screen, then I can I can share the QR code for the folks who want CC, CCA credits. Okay, there I stopped sharing.